everybody top metalhead weather man here hopefully everyone's doing well today crazy thing that we're a few days away from the end of august here and we're quickly approaching uh september here and september is actually going to start off with quite a bang we're going to have quite the pattern flip here so with that we have the chance of severe weather over the course of the next three days we have two slight risk for today and tomorrow and then the marginal risk friday which i'm leery of it could very well get upgraded as well but that's not only the that's not the only thing that we're going to be looking at here. It's going to be a big shift in the temperatures here. If you look on the screen here, you can see that we have a big change coming up on the six to ten day outlook. Northeast is looking like we're going to be seeing a major cool down there. This is looking like a definite positive PNA setup where it's warm out to the west, very cool off to the east here. And then also we're dealing with an increase in precipitation here, especially towards the southern states for the for the next week or so and this is even reflected a little bit more so in the 8 to 14 day outlook to go along with it thing is with 18 8 to 14 day eventually we start to see that cool down diminish as we go further along here so let's go ahead and get into the models now and we're looking at the gfs here jumped a little bit ahead here here's our next storm system which is going to increase our severe weather chances once again it's going to be in the same areas of course you saw on the screen going to be over towards the dakotas great lakes and also over towards the northern tier of the midwest pretty well wrapped up storm system so the chance of all hazards are possible we don't see a ridge here like we did earlier this week so i think the damaging wind threat does drop off a bit because of this I don't necessarily think we'll get any hatch risk in the meanwhile, but there is always a chance that we could get an uptrend in parameters here. But this is going to be a big factor in our severe weather both today and especially tomorrow as well, especially going to be over towards parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin, where we were looking actually the other night when we were live streaming, we were seeing a lot of action over here towards Euclar. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If not, definitely correct me in the comments. As time goes on, though, we end up seeing another storm system come in. And also, to go along with that, you can see a little bit more in the way of activity over towards the southeast. Like on the outer end of this ridge here, where we're still seeing that clockwise flow, we're going to start to see more in the way of uh, short waves, troughs to come in. And this is what's going to help increase that storm chance. This seems most prominent in the evening hours or right around sunset, I would say. As time goes on, we eventually start to get that trough, troughing to occur over here towards the southeast, so rain chances will be going up anywhere that's going to be east of this ridge that's popped up over here towards the west. And as time goes on, we're going to see an, a, a notable increase in activity over here towards the southeast as well as we get into the early part of September. So we continue to go forward, getting towards the middle of the month. We still see plenty of activity over towards the northern states, but more so towards the northwest, actually, which is good news. There have been a lot of wildfire issues over there, and also Canada like, might look pretty interesting as we go further along as well in regards to severe weather to go along with this. You can see a pretty well-wrapped up uh, trough and low-pressure system accompanying this. So we may even do some Canadian streams soon. As time goes on, that pattern pretty much look, look, looks like it uh, holds for the next 9 to 10 days here. And a more notable low even comes in around the 10th. So even after the 8 to 14 day period, we could have another cool down possibly on the horizon here. Obviously looking 330 hours out, I don't have a major amount of confidence in whether this will verify. But this is a definitely an interesting look that I'm going to be paying extra close attention to. Not to mention the uh, storm track here also. This is definitely continuing to show a pattern that is favorable for severe weather, but we may see it start to shift more so towards the central plains. Unclear at this point, of course, whether we'll have hazards for damaging winds, hail. Tornadoes can't be ruled out, obviously, but definitely not seeing any tornadic outbreak setups. But in any case, though, let's go ahead and keep the ball rolling here and look at our next parameter for severe weather. We're going to mainly be looking at dew points from this point here. Not going to get too heavy into the uh, days that are further out, but we're going to be mainly looking at the next few days. Moisture returns have been more than sufficient enough for severe weather. As you can see, even those 60 degree dew points, which is about the minimum threshold making its way into Canada at this point. We even see some of those 70 degree dew points working their way up to the north here into those 
Great Lakes states and even into the Ohio Valley, I do think that there is a good chance that Friday's marginal risk will be updated to a slight risk. And then as time goes on, plenty of abundant moisture existing across the southeast. So once we start getting that trough in here, we're going to have an increased chance of shower and storm activity, especially as we get towards the evening hours where forcing is going to be a little bit better. Then, of course, as time goes on here, and this is kind of going along with my thought process as to what could be happening over towards the central plains now with the increase in moisture over there and the storm track shifting. I do think that severe weather chances will increase over towards areas like maybe central southern Nebraska, maybe even parts of Kansas as we go forward here. Like I said, still being as far out as we are, it's more or less hearsay at this point. So next thing we're going to look at, and we're also going to avert your attention over here to the top right or bottom left corner, excuse me, where we're going to be looking at the temperature anomalies and see how they correlate with our surface temperatures here. Both of these are from the same model. So GFS sometimes doesn't show a great reflection of just how significant the temperature changes. But in this run right here, and what I want you to pay attention to is within the next several days. See how we were in the 90s over towards the Ohio Valley. Next morning, all right, next morning's kind of cool. We're in the 70s. All right, we go from 90 to 75 by the time we get towards Saturday afternoon. And then a notable change really starts to occur as we get to the early part of September here. So let's say we're looking at 21Z here. And you look a little further off to the east here, let's say New York. So this is towards the peak part of the day. 21Z would be about 5 o'clock Eastern, getting temperatures in the mid to upper 60s. And even that is running over into the southeast here, just off the Appalachians here, where we have mid 60 degree temperatures by 5 o'clock, which is unheard of for this time of year. So big temperature swing coming. And we're going to continue to see that eventually we do start to warm back up and then another little cold shot comes in after that briefly but I think we're going to be in the business of having multiple shifts between warm and cold air September sometimes can be a transitional month it definitely seems like it'll be more towards October sometimes where we get this but we're seeing a notable shift this early on it also kind of lends itself to maybe an active severe weather pattern as well as time goes on so a lot we're going to be keeping an eye on here so speaking of severe weather we're going to go look at the next couple of days here as far as instability is concerned there's going to be ample instability available combined with that moisture the surface temperatures that are already present as well and a decent for forcing mechanism we're going to of course be paying extra close attention to the areas that we we're highlighting earlier could see more pop-up storms developing over here, maybe towards the Ohio Valley, maybe even towards the Carolinas as time goes on. It really depends on where you're set up on that ridge. If you're on the uh, outer edge of that, where the air is starting to uh, diverge a little bit, maybe you could get a little bit of development going on there. But last but not least, let's just take an overall view of what our precipitation map could look like over the course of the next couple of weeks. As we mentioned before, severe weather is expected across both these regions here and here didn't mean to nearly pull up that skew t there but the areas that we're going to be looking at is trying to mark it here here and of course here so what's going to happen as time goes on is we're going to end up seeing more in the way of activity over towards the southern plains and central plains as we get into September here. Starting to see the increase in activity over towards the southeast. Starting to see more scattered sh showers and storms probabilities over towards the southern Tennessee Valley again, as we mentioned before. Even Texas looks like it starts to get into the action. The Gulf of Mexico gets more busy as well, hence why we had that above average probability as we get towards the start of September in particular. And as we go further along here, you're going to start to see where those chances of storms develop over towards this region. More activity again over towards the east coast in particular. And while it isn't verifying as much yet until about the 7th and the 6th, there it is right there. There's, there's our first signs and then we're going to see multiple events from that point onward all the way into the middle of the month. We do have to still keep an eye on the tropics. 
we'll have a video coming up within the next day or so discussing the new area of interest over there to go further along that's all i got for you guys in this video hope you enjoyed it if you did you know what to do make sure you smash that like button destroy that subscribe button if you are new and also hit that share button as well number love for you guys see you next time it's time that weatherman have an awesome rest of your day